What's up YouTube? In this video, I will tell you the best tools to get a better mouse accuracy. The first tool will be browser games outside of StarCraft that will help you generally, even for games like League or Dota. And then later on, I will show you the arcade maps that I use myself to warm up, as well as a couple of tips for in-game mouse movement. But first, let's start with the importance of mouse accuracy. I believe mouse accuracy to be one of the biggest factors that limits micro, but also macro and StarCraft. The better you get, the more precise and quick you will become in all stages of the game. It doesn't matter if you're transferring drones, spreading creep, placing depots, selecting the right amount of units to defend harassment, or microing your marines. The better you get at handling your mouse, the more efficient you will become at playing StarCraft. The most impressive pro gamers to watch are always the ones that move their mouse efficiently and accurate with very little misclicks. Clam is probably the fastest StarCraft II player thanks to his great accuracy, while POVs from players like Maru and Cyril also look very impressive with more calm, efficient and also super accurate mouse movements. I personally value mouse accuracy very highly and implementing practice drills for the mouse helps me with staying focused over a longer period of time since there is more variety in my practice and it also gives me some hard numbers to see if I improve or not. I use two websites that I usually warm up with before playing StarCraft 2 every day. One for short range accuracy like you would use for focus firing units for example, and one for long range accuracy like you do for shifting between clicking on the minimap and spreading creep. I always start with mouseaccuracy.com and usually play 3 rounds with 30 seconds on tiny and normal, followed up by 3 rounds of tiny and hard. It is also the perfect game to play while waiting for a letter game. I suggest playing on tiny and using the speed that lets you hit all the targets most of the times without any misclicks first. You need to build the right foundation for your mouse accuracy like you do with most other skills. So focus on going on the shortest possible path with a straight line from one target to the next in a speed that lets you hit every target for the 30 seconds comfortably. Then after a couple of repetitions, you can speed up the game and go to a harder difficulty to challenge yourself. Try to go to a difficulty where you can still hit at least 90% of the targets. You can test different target sizes as well, but I do not recommend going above small for the target size. By the way, I will list all the scores that I got during the recording of this in the comments below and I hope that you guys comment your own scores below that. I'm really interested to see how good my average viewer is at this type of stuff. The second browser game I use is Aim Booster. Here I play around with three different modes, the precision training, the double shot and finally the actual Aim Booster. For the precision training I play with the default settings for about a minute. For the double shoot, I also play with the default settings for about a minute, but I try to always hit the top target first in the first 30 seconds, followed by the bottom target first in the next 30 seconds. And finally, I finish my browser warm-up with an attempt at the actual aim booster to see how long I can survive. Until about a minute into the game, I try to stay at 100% accuracy and be as efficient as possible with my mouse movements to force myself not to lose focus on the easier start of the game. On most days, I follow this up by one of the following arcade games. Practice Aim Infinite. I play this on hard with a single tank. This is where I could notice my recent mouse switch, since I went from barely ever completing the entire map to completing it 70% of the time. The map itself is pretty self-explanatory. You should once again play this in a difficulty that would let you get close to completing it every time. One tip for this is that if you find some of the parts too easy, you can challenge yourself with hitting the units in a non-optimal pattern to increase the difficulty to your liking. Iceman's Mouse Security Trainer on this map, you try to move the marines into the circle as quickly as you can. This will help for accurately boxing and moving around freely on the minimap. It will help with a bunch of stuff, but I find this most similar to spreading creep quickly. In order to do this as fast as possible, this is the perfect map to learn boxing from different directions as well. What I mean by that is that if a marine is standing at the top left of the point, the quickest way of getting it where you want it to be is to box from the top left to have the smallest possible path to the goal of where you want the marine to go. That means if the marine is to the bottom right of the spot, boxing from the bottom right is the theoretical best way of doing things as well. Learning to box from multiple directions will also help your splitting abilities. Marine control. A little fun fact here is that this is already the second arcade map that was created by the ex-pro gamer Moro. It gives you realistic scenarios to micro the marines. You can complete most levels with a mix of focus firing and splitting. Even if you're not a Terran, being able to focus fire well helps in a lot of scenarios, so you can experiment a bunch here. I believe completing all the levels is fun and helpful, but for specifically focus firing and kiting with focus firing, I would suggest to play through the first 10 levels here if you can, or at least test around a bit for 10 minutes, however far you might get. You can also solve a lot of the levels with splitting instead, so it's up for you to decide what you would like to practice here. Legacy of the Void Unit Tester Online. 
Now this is probably the most useful arcade for trying out stuff and practicing micro in general. If you have a friend that plays StarCraft, I highly recommend going in here to practice different fights over and over again. I use it myself to get better at late game unit control for example, since in a real game you only have the game deciding fight with the perfect army once, with a lot more pressure. Here you can learn what to prioritize and how to micro your army. But that's not what we're here for. One thing I like to do is create a group of units and simply run into one direction while trying to split them all apart as fast as possible. You can do this with any unit from all three races. You can also challenge yourself to do it in a specific time or for example split a certain amount of marines before the stim is expired. I wanted to include the marine split challenge as well, but I included this instead since I think it is generally very helpful and also includes units other than marines. And now for one final tip. You can practice certain drills instead of using the usual APM warm-up at the beginning of each game. Some examples that I do would be trying to shift-click every mineral patch in a specific order, selecting all your workers one by one or doing anything else that will challenge your accuracy. You can be creative and find your own drills at the beginning of each game and let me know if you found something fun to do. And who knows, maybe I will be the one that ends up copying your early game warm-up drills. Just remember, practice makes perfect. Don't try to go too fast and set practice becoming slightly faster consistently while always remaining accurate. If you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like. And before you go, I just want to say that I opened up my second channel where I upload loads of educational content. So if you want to learn everything there is to learn about Zerg, make sure to subscribe to my second channel. I'll uh, put it right here. With that being said, thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video.